Hello, my name's Garrett, and I'm going to show you how to make your own simple VR animation using Photoshop and Premiere. Before we get started, I recommend that you watch my previous VR tutorial as a primer, but if you think you're pretty fucking sharp, we can just dive into it. Open up Premiere and make a new sequence. You can see the 360 video in the VR tab here. You have a few options. Ambisonic audio is what rotates with the camera. That's four channel audio, it's difficult to implement, so we're not gonna do that. Down here we have stereoscopic video, which is 3D. That's basically two different pieces of video stacked vertically, and I'm not gonna get into that. We're gonna stick with monoscopic. That's your standard 2D video. So select monoscopic, full resolution, regular audio. We're gonna be working in 8K, which seems like a lot, but that's actually the standard resolution for 360 video. Now I'm gonna open up Photoshop. I have a 360 photo here already, and you can download this yourself to play around with. I'll provide a link for that. It's already in the two by one equal rectangular format, so we just have to make sure it's the right size. 8,192 by 4,096 pixels. And we can already use this in Premiere, so I'm just gonna save it as a JPEG, and I'm gonna drag it into my sequence. To view it in 360, I can toggle that preview window. And to do that, just click on this little thing here to bring up your button options. And then make sure you have this VR icon selected. Now we can toggle that. So we can view our content in equal rectangular or the 360 test view. And you can also bring up some options here that lets you widen the preview. So we're looking around and this is pretty cool. And this can be uploaded to YouTube as it is. This is, uh, this is ready to go. But it's a really boring video because nothing's moving. So I'm gonna go back to Photoshop and see if I can't animate some clouds or something. I'm just gonna use the pen tool to isolate the sky and mask that part out. The area around the bridge is kind of tricky. So I'm gonna have to carefully blend the clouds in but I need to make sure I'm not editing anything close to the edge because otherwise that's gonna give me a seam. So here's how you work with seamless textures. Go to Filter, Other, Offset. So now I just slide the seam over to the middle and I can edit that area without hitting the edge of the canvas. Okay. Now I'm gonna make a new night sky background layer. As you may know, I can't simply draw in this canvas because everything in the top and bottom is going to be heavily distorted. So I have to draw in the spherical preview. Go to 3D Spherical Panorama, create new panorama from selected layers. Using the selection tool I can pan around and using the brush I can draw normally. So I'm just going to get my star brush here and get some stars going. Drag around and draw some stars. When I'm finished, I double click on my texture. This takes me back to the equal rectangular view. I can save this image and then drag it into Premiere as a background layer. Now I have two separate layers and I can apply effects to them separately. I can move them around or change the colors or brightness. I could try to put another layer on top of that one. Um, I'm gonna try to make an over-the-top Aurora Borealis animation shimmering across the night sky. Let's see if I can do that. Here's my Aurora Borealis drawn in the same canvas as before. And this is basically just a scribble that I motion blurred at an angle. Notice that I'm not drawing anything at the top or bottom because that's the section that's gonna get really distorted. But I can get away with drawing some stuff in this small area laterally. So this is the easiest way for me to draw this, but once I get this back in Premiere, I'm obviously going to tilt this to make it go through the sky. It's not gonna be going laterally. And I can use the offset filter from before to make this into a seamless texture that wraps all the way around. So let's do that. I save it as a PNG and I drag it into my sequence on top of the background layer and beneath the city layer. In order to move this thing around, 
I go to Video Effects, Immersive Video, Rotate Sphere. Pop one of those on. Now, just like a planet spinning on a tilted axis, I'm going to animate the lateral motion and then tilt that so it looks like it's coming over the sky. So, first I animate this axis. I can change the speed later. But here's where it gets kind of fucked up. In order to place this thing where I want it in the scene, I'm going to have to add a new stack of rotations. This will reset the axis that I'm rotating. So that way I can shift it around without affecting the animation that I just did on the other axes. Does that make sense? Pan it over a bit. So this looks pretty cool, but I can make this a lot better by adding more layers to this. If I duplicate this thing and add some variation of color, opacity, and, and blurriness, then I can make it look like it's, you know, not just a static image, but that it's actually warping. And if you're used to editing in Premiere, it's basically the same. The only thing you have to be aware of is that this video content has seams. So, if we are going to blur this thing, we have to use the VR blur that's available to us, because that takes the seam into account. But yeah, now I have a, a smooth animation in the sky there, and if I wanted this to look really good, I would isolate the water and try to get some flickering lights on the waves. My computer can barely run this as it is, so I'm just going to wrap it up. In your export settings, you're going to want to render this as an HEVC at full resolution. And when you scroll down, you'll see at the bottom of the options, there's a little checkbox that says your video is VR. That's really all you need. So hit export. When it's finished, upload it to YouTube. It should automatically be identified as VR content. It's pretty easy. I recommend setting it to private just so you get a chance to look at it before it's actually live because this is probably going to take half a day to uh, process itself. But once it's done, you can watch it on your phone or your headset or whatever. And uh, that's about it. Thanks for watching and let me know if you have any questions. All right. I'll see you next time.